Paintings and other artworks shine best in daylight, but are also affected by radiation from the sun. Hi, I'm Chris, and in this video I'll explain why museums and private art collections need special glass and how you can implement effective protection of artworks with UV protective glass, whether on a large scale in a museum or in your home. But why does art need daylight at all? There are two reasons. The first is obvious. Because most artists paint in daylight. Often, works of art were painted outdoors, in very specific places with particularly harmonious light. In artificial light, these paintings then appear different from how the artist saw them. Van Gogh, for example, who was in search of a new light, painted in sunny Isles in south of France and shared an apartment there with Gauguin. Both artists were fascinated by the special colors in the south of France and painted there in sunlight because it had such a color rendition. Daylight brings out the colors, nuances and the depth effect of artwork intended by the artists way better than artificial light. So art needs daylight on the one hand because of the better color rendering and on the other hand, because it would be a pity to hang up pictures like this one or this one in a room without sunlight. Daylight also has some unpleasant side effects. Before I talk about the danger of daylight for art, I'll explain the properties of daylight and what distinguishes it from artificial light. To the human eye, daylight is the most natural light. Artificial light is usually not as color neutral as daylight. The whiter light is, the more color neutral it is. Perfect white light has a continuous spectrum of all visible wavelengths. To describe color neutrality, there is the so-called color rendering index, called RA. Here, eight test colors are used as a reference point to determine deviations in color rendering. The index ranges from 0 to 100, and daylight is 99.6, for almost perfect color neutrality. For color-neutral light to be perceived by the human eye, without restriction, our eyes need a minimum brightness, and brightness is measured in looks. Good color vision begins at about 50 looks, and we achieve full visual acuity from about 100 looks. The sun's radiation intensity in summer is about 100,000 looks. So brightness is only a problem on very cloudy winter days. Let's take a look at the diagram here. There you'll see the spectra of the sunlight displayed according to their wavelengths in nanometers. On the far left is the shortwave ultraviolet light or UV light. Only gamma rays and X-rays have even shorter wavelengths, but they're not part of the sunlight. UV radiation goes from 200 to 380 nanometers and is further divided into three ranges. UVC radiation goes from 200 to 280 nanometers and does not reach the Earth's surface. UVB radiation goes from 280 to 315 nanometers and UVA radiation goes from 315 to 380 nanometers. The shorter the wavelength, the more energetic the radiation. For sensitive art objects, therefore, the shortwave UVB rays are the most dangerous. The visible radiation range of 380 to 780 nanometers is perceived as light by the human eye and accounts for about 45% of solar radiation. Sunlight in the visible range is composed of the so-called spectral colors violet, blue, green, yellow and red. You can see them here. At this point, a quick side note on the subject of color vision. When sunlight hits an object that your eyes perceives as red, all the light waves, except the red light, are absorbed. Only this red light is reflected by the object and reaches our eye. Black appearing objects absorb all light, while white appearing surfaces reflect all spectral colors. Colors such as pink, brown, beige results from the mixture of different spectral colors. An interesting thing, our eyes can distinguish shades of green better than other colors. This is due to our eye sensitivity. 
which you can see drawn in the graph. At about 550 nanometers in the green range, our eyes have the highest sensitivity. That's why we can perceive and distinguish green tones the best. Let's now move on to the wavelengths above 780 nanometers in the right of the visible spectrum. Radiation with a wavelength between 780 and 2800 nanometers is called infrared radiation. We perceive this type of solar radiation as heat. Wavelengths longer than one millimeter are called micro radiation and wavelengths uh, even longer than 10 centimeters are called radio waves. To understand the effects of sunlight on art, you need to know a few more things about sunlight. First, the shorter the wavelength of the radiation, the more energetic it is. This means that UV light is more energetic than visible light and infrared radiation. Second, UV light and infrared light are invisible for us and therefore have no effect on our perception. So theoretically, if 100% of the UV light and infrared light were filtered out, we would be able to perceive works of art in the same way as before. You've probably seen an object whose colors have slowly faded over time. The sun is responsible for this. Or more precisely, UV light. Colors consist of so-called color pigments. If color pigments are exposed to the sun for a long time, they will slowly decompose. When UV light hits an art object, such as an oil painting, the photons are so energetic that they can set photochemical decomposition processes in motion. This is shown, for example, by yellowing, fading, and color shift. The speed of this process depends on several factors. First, composition of the wavelengths in the light, for which the UV index is a good guide. The shorter the wavelength of the light, the more energy the photons have, and the more chemical bonds are destroyed. Second, radiation intensity. It determines the rate at which photons strike the artwork. On a summer day, in the blazing midday sun, the radiation intensity in our latitudes in Central Europe is about 100,000 lux. If clouds move in front of the sun, it's still about 20,000 lux. In direct sunlight, therefore, the artwork is destroyed about five times as fast. Every work of art and every color behaves differently in sunlight. Different colors consist of different chemical compositions and are therefore differently susceptible to radiation. This causes these unsightly color shifts. For example, from green to blue, or from yellow to brown. In Van Gogh's famous sunflower paintings, for example, the yellow in some paintings has shifted towards brown over time. This is due to the different color stability of the individual pigments. Depending on the composition, more or less energy is needed to destroy pigments. Organic structures can often be broken with less energy than inorganic structures. Thus, longer wavelengths in daylight can damage the organic pigments, while the mostly stable inorganic structures are normally only destroyed by the short ultraviolet radiation. You can also see the effects of sunlight in this aquarelle. Here, on the left, was a frame over the painting. There, the colors are still original. Everywhere else, they are faded. In addition to harmful chemical processes, sunlight can also cause physical damage. This is due to the infrared radiation that heats the works during the day. This causes the materials to expand and contract when they cool down at night, particularly canvases become brittle and dry out over time as a result of this process. Dry tension first develops in the material and then small cracks. In museums, room temperature and humidity are therefore controlled. Which art objects are particularly sensitive? Particularly sensitive objects include paintings and works of art made of organic dyes. These include, for example, paintings in sort of aqua technique 
on paper and parchment, historical color photographs, silk, and natural history pieces such as uh, furs and butterflies. Some of these materials are so sensitive that they are affected by visible light radiation. Slightly less light sensitive, but still at a risk, are oil paintings and natural materials, such as wood sculptures or yeet leather, bone and ivory. Materials that are less sensitive to light include colored glass, ceramic glaze and gemstones. Metals, minerals, stones and unglazed ceramics are insensitive to light. Glass against light damage or UV rays. Glass is the obvious solution so you can enjoy the art the way the artist painted it, in sunlight. But conventional window glass lets harmful UV light through. So you need special UV protective paints to protect the art. These reduce the sun's harmful UV radiation and prevent UV-related damage to the artwork. You can also combine the UV glass with another paint that additionally reduces infrared radiation. UV protective paints should not transmit any radiation at all. As soon as a little UV hits your art, it will be attacked and damaged over time. It is especially important that the UV protection paints do not darken the room too much. Everyone knows um, that, for example, you cannot distinguish blue and green if it's quite dark. Our eyes need a brightness of approximately 100 lux to perceive colors correctly. In addition, the light protection paint must not impair the color neutrality of sunlight. Daylight is almost perfectly white. Make sure that this value remains as high as possible. The decisive factor here is the color rendering index. So what do museums and art collectors look for when they equip their exhibition rooms with glass windows? This is the so-called transmission spectrum of a UV protective pane. You can see that sunlight only passes through the pane at wavelengths above 380 nanometers. At lower wavelengths, the transmission is zero. You can also combine UV protective paints with infrared protective paints. But then this curve looks a bit different. A perfect transmission curve would transmit 100% of the visible light and filter out all the other wavelengths perfectly. But glass cannot do that with the current state of science research. It is also very important for the curve that the visible light shines through the pane in equal parts. If the curve is slanted at the top, it means that some wavelengths are filtered more than others. Then color perception is affected. Now you know how to keep the sun's dangerous rays out with UV protective windows. In addition, of course, you should also take care of the burglary protection. For example, Silatec UV protection panes are of course also burglar resistant. To this topic, I'll link you a video here. The combination with burglary protection makes Silatec paints the perfect choice for museums, galleries, and of course, private houses. I hope this video helped you to understand the pros and cons of daylight for artwork. Windows are ideal for effectively protecting your artwork without sacrificing daylight. Feel free to ask questions below this video in the comments and leave us a subscription if you're interested in other topics like for example window burglary protection or bulletproof glass. Here you can find the next video. See you there and thank you so much for watching.